And I give the call to the Deputy Leader of the Opposition. My question is to the Prime Minister. The authorised official history of the Uluru Statement from the Heart, written by co-chairs Megan Davis and Pat right. Anderson, was published six days ago. The almost 200-page hardcover book states, quote, the statement was drafted and overwhelmingly... Mr. Order. Speaker. The members on my right... The, the, the Deputy Leader will just resume her seat briefly. Members on my right know the procedures of this place. It is highly disorderly to interject, particularly when questions are being asked. Members on my right are now formally warned, and the Deputy Leader of the Opposition will start her question again. My question is to the Prime Minister. The authorised official history of the Uluru Statement from the Heart, written by co-chairs Megan Davis and Pat Anderson, was published six days ago. The almost 200-page hardcover book states, quote, the statement was drafted and overwhelmingly endorsed by the Convention's delegates. It is 15 pages long. End quote. Does the Prime Minister still maintain the Uluru Statement is just one page and that any suggestions otherwise are conspiracy theory and nonsense? Order. The Deputy Leader was heard in silence and so will the Prime Minister. He has the call. Thanks, Mr Speaker. Wait till they reveal the secret verses of your The Voice by John Farnham. <laughs> Wait till they find that, Mr Speaker. Order. Because they're out there somewhere. There's a 10-minute bagpipe solo in there. It goes on and on and on and on. Mr Speaker. The Minister for Resources. So we had in that question that it's 200 pages. Then we had it's 20 pages. Yes, and the front page of the paper was 15 pages. What happened? If you have a look, if you have a look at what it says, the record of meetings and views in different locations that are published very helpfully today in News Corp tabloids, it says things like this, for example. Delegates at the First Nations Regional Dialogue stated that the reform must be substantive, meaning that minimal reform or symbolic reform is not enough. Dialogues emphasising that reform need to be substantive and structural include Hobart, Broome, Darwin, Perth, Sydney, Ross River, Adelaide, Brisbane, Torres Strait and Canberra. It goes on and says, for example, Order, the document the quote the reports from individual dialogue meetings. Order. For example, they cite the reflection of the participants in the Perth Dialogue that we have learned through the leaders of the Pilbara strike, we have learned from the stories of our big sisters, our mothers, how to be proud of who we are. Mr Speaker, in the lead up to the Uluru Statement from the Heart, there were hundreds of meetings involving thousands of Indigenous people set up under the former government this process. Set up under the former government. Meeting, the meeting, at, the the Uluru, meeting at Uluru in 2017. Two, agree. Two. The Uluru Statement from the Heart, which I table, the one-page document, the one-page document. And they know full well that Megan Davis has made it very clear that the Uluru Statement is one page. Order. What we have, what we have here is Order. a whole range of uh, <coughs> meeting minutes, effectively, of the hundreds of meetings that took place in the lead-up to Uluru because it was well thought through, Order. Mr Speaker, and they came up with a gracious 440-word uh, statement. 440-word statement, just like the words that are in the question before the Australian people are very clear and succinct as well. But they don't want to talk about them. They want to talk about everything but. They say that people are confused but they try to add to every bit of confusion with what is an utter untruth that they know is totally untrue, which is, why Ken Wyatt, which is why Ken Wyatt, their person who was minister in the Morrison Order. government, the has walked away has from you. Concluded. Give the call to the member for... Order, the member for... Order, members on my right, the Minister for Early Education and the Minister for... Home Affairs. The member for Cunningham will resume her seat. She will get the call. The Deputy Leader of the Opposition on a point of order. Uh, Mr Speaker, I seek leave to table various newspaper articles and the book to which I refer, which, knowing the Prime Minister's form, he probably hasn't read. Uh, 
the no, the deputy leader is seeking to table a a book and documents. Order, she's entitled. Order, members on my right, she's entitled to table a, a book. The leader of order, the member for Fairfax, the oh, the member for the member for uh, Dawson will leave the chamber under 94A. Just just so that you're clear, I'm trying to deal with points of order from your side. You leave, the, you leave the chamber and not interject on the way out either.